it was not that clear cut. It was not that clear cut at all. And the book goes on and it goes into a lot of detail. And there are all kinds of further accusations and counter accusations. And they end up making sworn statements against Herbert, including him leading the killing of civilians. So they start making accusations against him. And this is, and again, these documents are are in this book. That's one of the things that makes this book so good is it's got all this actual documentation here. They, they recommend revoking his orders. They recommend removing his opportunity to, to lead or be in command again. General Russ, who's the overall decision maker on the case, agrees with the accusatory statements, kills Colonel Herbert's career. So the, the idea that he was bound to win, no. Actually doesn't work out that way. Colonel Herbert fights it. He fights this. Spends a bunch of his own money. So, and then he goes on the offense. Because mm-hmm. he wanted investigations before. Now he goes on the offense. Ch- charges, uh, brings charges up against Colonel Franklin. 14 separate specifications, including failure to report murders and ter- torture. He does the same thing to General Barnes. Fail up, failure to report war crimes on multiple occasions. So he's going on the offense. It gets national publicity. It's in the news. The lead investigator for the army, this guy by the name of Major Carl Hensley, according to the book, and, and I hate to say that, I'm just, because I, I don't know what the truth is. According to the book, this guy, Major Carl Hensley, had told Herbert, like, look, we believe you, you're right, we can win this thing. And then he kills himself. Kills himself with a shotgun. You can, you can look that one up. It's in a New York Times press briefing, Major Carl Hensley, suicide. Ends up all the charges are eventually dropped against both Barnes and Franklin. Colonel Franklin eventually relieved from his command for throwing a Vietnamese body out of a out of a helicopter in Vietnam. And again, this guy was the most decorated, from what I could find in research, most decorated officer from his West Point class, 1950. 1991, by the way, Colonel Franklin convicted and spent five years in prison for a uh, securities scheme scam. Swindled uh, about a hundred people out of millions of dollars. So there's like a, you know, <laughs> you see these questionable characters, char- characteristics. So all the charges. So imagine this: all the charges against Barnes and Franklin get dropped, but Herbert is not charged with making a single false statement. So all these things that he had said. Mm-hmm. He never gets charged for making a false statement, but the charges get dropped. Mm. He goes kind of public, does a bunch of interviews. Eventually, he's retired, or he retires. You know, he's done with the army. He gets, eventually he gets interviewed on 60 Minutes by Mike Wallace. And this is freaking crazy. So they have... And I've tried to find this, haven't been able to find it, but I read about it. They have Herbert getting interviewed by Mike Wallace. He kind of tells his story. And then out of the other room, they bring Major Grimshaw, who was part of the unit, who comes out and says, yeah, look, I, I worked for Herbert. I know Herbert. I respect Herbert. But what he said isn't true. So so now who are we supposed to believe? So... Herbert sues Mike Wallace in 60 Minutes for libel. It's a 13-year court case. It's a 13-year court case. (sighs) Eventually gets all the way to the Supreme Court and Herbert loses the case. Herbert eventually, he became a um, 
clinical psychologist and also a police psychologist, dies of cancer uh, June 7th, 2014. Just a, the, the whole thing is a travesty. And I guess the best thing we can do is what can we learn from it? What can we learn from it? I would say the obvious lesson here is put your ego aside and build relationships with people. Now, you might say, well, these people were doing wrong. Okay, so what what good do you do when you just build, form an antagonistic relationship, do you have more influence over them or less influence over them? You have less. So if you can build a relationship with people, now listen, this is, again, this is so freaking hard. This is what makes leadership hard. If, these, if there's people that are doing things that are immoral, illegal, unethical, okay, what are you gonna do? You can do what Herbert did, stand up to him, and guess what? He gets fired, now he has no influence over the situation. Because if you think like, oh, you have to stop that. That's my moral obligation to stop this stuff from happening. Was, did Colonel Herbert stop it from happening? No. Instead, he's gone. He has no more influence. Who took, who took over his battalion? Some yes man. One of Colonel Franklin's you know, boys that came in and started towing the party line. So... Freaking disaster. It's a it's just a disaster. You get you get the high ground, great, you got the high ground, and then you and then you uh uh look down on people mm. and you get an antagonistic relationship with them. Yeah. And there's all the all the stuff is documented. You gotta read the book. Um and I'm sure we could have more discussions. Maybe we will. Maybe we'll bring some. Maybe we'll find somebody that was there that knows more about it. I know there's look. There's two sides to every story too. I mean, you you were you pointed out. You know, was were they just trying to get the job done? Is was he exaggerating some of the stuff? I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. My original take was that this guy is like a hack. My original information that I got was this guy was a Hackworth type individual. From, that was from from Colonel Howe, his, Herbert had worked for his grandfather, right? So this is like the closest we're gonna get right now that we can go off of. I don't know, I don't know. I know that leadership is a freaking challenge. I know that. And this book proves it. <sighs> I hate this feeling, Echo Charles. Mm-hmm. The kind of empty feeling. Empty feeling. Yeah, sure. Don't like it. <clears throat> yeah, and so. I don't like when I can't really identify the truth. I can't. I don't like it. Yeah. And that's kind of why. I I did think about that where thinking about the other people's perspective, you know, and with that kind of, you kind of think like, how did, how did, let's say that the guy is like all wrong. Like, because let's face, according to the story, it kind of sounds like they're almost like corrupt almost where they're like, Hey, who cares? You know, kind of thing. So it's like, what? So what? We just have a straight up corrupt military. Is that what you're saying? Like in that little That's in that it, spot? absolutely what he's saying. Yeah. So we know on certain terms he's saying that. Yeah. But a normal Which person. is horrible for us to think that this entire division or this entire brigade at a minimum was corrupt. Yeah. And that's, and that's what I'm thinking. But the reality is like so – these aren't like bad people. Like most people aren't just bad people who are just like destined for corruption or whatever. It's almost like you kind of got to consider how did they get there? Like, yeah. why is it like that? 
It's not because they're just these evil people who finally got their position of power and now yeah. can just exploit weakness and nothing like that. But you take and you put all these factors in place, like the fact that, hey, if you go do this tour, you're going to get promoted, you're going to get more money, you're, you are you got to go do this, and when you get over there, well, what's the best way to get a good evaluation? You get a good evaluation by doing what everyone else is doing. Lay, you know, you don't want to stick your head up and be the one that gets draws a bunch of attention, so if that's what we're doing, you, you know, it's an expression that you use. Yeah. You use this expression, that's what we're doing. Yeah. You know, like you'll say, oh, that's, I thought that's just what we were doing. Yeah. You use that expression sometimes? Well, that's a normal thing for people to feel. Look, that's what we're doing. Okay. That's what everyone yeah. else is doing. Uh, I'm on. Okay. Yeah. If we're going to let the Vietnamese kind of run and do whatever they want, if that's what we're doing, cool. I don't want to be the one that's drawn a bunch of attention to myself. It ain't about me. So I'm just going to kind of sit back and let it happen. Yeah. Well. So people get into that mode and you lose vision. Uh, here's the other thing. Like how much confidence do you have in yourself to say like, hey, everyone here is wrong. Everyone here that's letting this happen is wrong. Yeah. You know, how do you not feel like, wait a second, there's, you know, a brigade of 5,000 people here and everyone's kind of down with what's happening and I'm the person that's not? Yeah. There's something wrong here. Maybe yeah. it's wrong. Maybe there's something wrong with me. Yeah. Yeah. And you get the momentum and the inertia of, you get the inertia of, hey, hey, we're going to get a new battalion commander soon enough. Don't worry about this guy. He'll be gone. He's mm -hmm. only going to be here for six months. What, what, what are we trying to do? Make money, right? We can run these little scams and make some money. We, we just want to have the time pass so I can move on. I can just be done with my job. Trust me, that's, that's a real thing, even in today's military. Like, have you ever heard the zero defect, zero defect model? Where it's like, yeah. oh yeah, we're gonna promote someone that has had no mistakes. Yeah. So if you're over on deployment, if you're in Iraq or you're in Afghanistan, and you wanna get promoted, and there's a mission to go do, and you get to decide whether you go do that mission or not, do you think you should do it or not? Oh yeah. Got it. Yeah. So if you don't, basically, if you don't take that much action, you don't won't make that many right. mistakes. You right. know, and you can have the zero defect record. You, you have the zero defect record. I went on deployment. I did four missions. They all went well. Get a bronze star. Go home. Get a good evaluation, and we're good to go. Yeah. Or. I'm gonna go over there, I'm gonna do 100 missions. Every single one of those missions is a freaking ch challenge. And by the way, if you're doing four missions, you can kind of hand pick, you do, do 10 missions, you do 20 missions, you're hand pick, okay, this one's not bad, mm -hmm. not, not a bad area, we've got really good intel, mm -hmm. looks good, all right, go, we'll go ahead and execute this one. All right. If you're gonna do 100 missions, you're going, okay, look, this one's a little bit more high risk, but we're gonna go, it, it seems like it will make an impact, we'll go execute it. Yeah. There's a tendency, well, it's not a tendency, there's a possibility that you say, you know what, look, I, I don't wanna have anyone get hurt, I don't wanna have any bad, you know, I don't wanna have any negatives on my evaluation, yeah. I just wanna get my job done and move on. Yeah. You know, I wanna punch the ticket. So, you end up doing 14 missions. Hmm. And you did your job, good for you. And now you get your ticket punched and you go home and everyone's good. And by the way, when you get home, guess what, guess what everyone says? Hey, he, he did it. He was, a, he was a company commander. He was a battalion commander. He did a job. He he's a combat experienced veteran, as he said. Right. So now you're kind of on a pedestal a little bit. Yeah. Huh? Even though you really don't know anything. So what I'm saying is the system even more so in Vietnam was all set up where, hey, get over there, keep your mouth shut, go with the flow, fit in with the crew. Yeah. And that's why Hackworth had such a freaking issue with it. And so did Herbert. Makes sense. It's almost like they should maybe think about, and I'm saying this with complete ignorance, by the way, but <laughs> they should change the little system to be, to have, you know, like diving, you ever watch diving, like, um, I don't know, Olympics or whatever, oh. diving, mm -hmm. right? Like platform, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. They have, they have, uh, the difficulty scores level and the difficulty level exactly yeah, right yeah. so you get a score for difficulty level and if the difficulty level is low brah you're not gonna get a high score you know yeah yeah it's true and that's fine but again the system is really the, it's very easy for the system to fall back into a zero defect mentality a risk averse mentality because look I could go on deployment tomorrow 
and circumstances could be that there's just not a lot going on. Mm. And so we did four missions, not because we weren't aggressive, but because there wasn't that many missions to do. Yeah. And so I come back and you can't look down on me. You can't say, well, Jocko only did four missions. I did all right. the ones that I could. Right. I was aggressive as I could possibly be. We only did four. Yeah. You go on deployment, There's you could do 100 missions, but you only do four. Mm. But you come back and say, I did as many as Jocko, we're good to go. And I, I'm the overall leader, I wasn't there. So I'm looking at it and go, hey, Echo did four, Jocko did four, hey, these guys are equivalent, we're good to go, yeah. move on. Meanwhile, you were super risk averse, didn't take any chances, really didn't impact the battlefield, mm. and you're gonna get the same recognition. So it's a very difficult thing to do, it's a very difficult thing. And you can see, you can see that Vietnam just got so wrapped up in this, this careerism of, hey, go do your time, keep your mouth shut, get, you know, go with the flow. Yeah. And that's that. What, the, what are the missions that we're doing? Okay, we're doing that kind of mission, cool. Oh, got it. Yeah. We got guys smoking pot, no one really seems to notice that. Yeah, okay, yeah. well, I guess we're smoking pot. Like, it's just bad across the board. Yeah. And a lot of it has to do with what is our mission? What is our mission, Why? What, what, what means we want? Yeah. What means we want? If you don't even know what means you want, how are you gonna, you know, if you, if you went on a football field and you didn't know what how, if you didn't know how to score a goal, what would you do? Yeah. What would you do? You wouldn't be able to do anything. You wouldn't be, but as long as you know, hey, here's where you're trying to get to. Okay, got it. Give me that ball. Move it a foot down the field. I'll move it a yard down the field. I'll move it an inch down the field. You at least know which direction you're moving it. If you get told, hey, go out on that field, no one tells you where the end zone is. Yeah. Right? Yeah. No, no one tells you. So what are you going to do? So as a leader, you gotta take that into account. You gotta make sure people know what the mission is. You gotta know what the strategy is. And you better know why you're going to war. And you better make that perfectly clear when you're going. Check. Empty feeling, sorry. Don't like it. 